So, this talk, 20 minutes, I have a lot to say. Um, all of the things you're going to see are drawings I've done myself. So, they are ugly, but I hope you understand what is the meaning. Welcome, welcome, make yourself comfortable. I want to start with a story straight away about the coffee. I'm not going to wait to the end of the session to talk about the coffee thing. 2015, a young Scrum Master just got into a new team. The team was like, they had no idea what was, what was Agile, Scrum, XP, Kanban, Link, nothing at all. His English was very bad. He was in a new country that was not his. And he didn't start with the right foot with that team. They didn't know why he was there. He didn't present himself very well. And they even thought after a few days that he was a spy from the sponsors to check if they were doing well their work. So he saw like, okay, there is something wrong here. Um, maybe I need to find a way to connect with those people and see like, I'm here to help. He discovered that they were complaining about their coffee again and again, almost on a daily basis. And then he said like, maybe it's the chance to connect with those people, to say I'm here to help. So he invited everyone, 12 people in front of the place where they actually build and make their own coffee. So they were making their own coffee. They have the bottle, the hot water, the pounder, and even a recipe, uh, recipe to make it every day. And then he invited them for five minutes in front of there and say, hey, just let's do something quick here. Thumbs up if you like your coffee, thumbs down if you don't. After everyone putting up and down, say, okay, look around, the majority was down. The biggest majority, like 99.3% was down. And then he said, okay, look around, what do you see? And then someone shout from the back, our coffee is shitty. I said, okay, um, so what else? I said, yeah, it's bad, it's too much water. So what else? And they were like, yeah, it's not weak, it, it's weak, it's not strong enough, right? And then he said, okay, what can we try tomorrow? It's a small experiment that we see if it works or not, and we go from there. And then someone shout again from the back, maybe the same guy, we just put an extra pound of, uh, an extra cup, you know, an extra measurement of um, a pounder. So, okay, is it okay for everyone? Any objection? They said, oh, okay, let's try. They tried next day, and he did again. So let's do, again, thumbs up, thumbs down. How do you feel about the coffee? And everyone, or like 96.8% was thumbs up, and they kept the coffee like that. They changed the recipe of their own coffee, and he could connect with those people to say, like, I'm here to help. I'm not here as a spy, I'm not here to impose a scrum on you. I'm here to say like, okay, where and what can we help? Uh, what are the things we can improve here? Yeah, the guy uh, survived. Afterwards, they understood that he's there to help indeed. Did they change the whole organization because of that? No. They were happy forever and ever, like many unicorns and Agile is like, yay, yeah, no. But it was enough to get Agile into that team, to be on boarded and he started with other teams, and he's slowly going like, yeah, that stuff actually works, right? By the way, can you understand this drawing? Can you understand? No. Took me some time on uh, doing on Paint, Microsoft uh, well, Paint. If you don't, uh, I can explain in the break. So, before we go, why Agile? Should we go for Agile or not? Why not Waterfall? Why not uh, working the slides, right? Now it's back. So, why not Waterfall? Maybe waterfall works. So I have three assumptions for you. Let's go for waterfall in case those three things are answered yes. The first one, the client knows exactly what he or she wants. If it's yes, go to the next one. We know exactly how to build it. If it's yes again, go to the next one. Nothing is going to change. If those three assumptions are yes and it's very predictable and safe and you can really predict everything, why not waterfall? Go for it. But if it's not that predictable, things are going to change. It's a VUCA world. Maybe Agile, Inspect and Adapt might suit better your context. On the other hand, let's avoid uh, Agile, Agile every time. I, I was there already. And I've seen many, many Scrum Masters and coaches saying Agile all the time. People get allergic to the word. Even the ones that they were like in the middle, they are not against, they are not in favor, but they hear the word so many times that they look like a cat when you're gonna throw a cat on the bathtub, and the cat's like, Meow. it's like, you know, like agile. Meow. The people get allergic to that. 
So in the last years, you won't see me saying agile in my coaching. I speak about improving the way of working, delivering faster, delivering better, the right product, the product right, and having better collaboration. I don't even use the word anymore. I feel as a, okay. I like to say that agile, it's not the end, but it's a mean to an end. And many transformations are selling agile as that is the goal, where you want to go. So let's say that you want to go from point A to B. Maybe you can try waterfall. You try waterfall, the steps, and ooh, we are uh, almost deadline. Maybe we have to test everything in one month. Oh my God, otherwise our heads are cut. Maybe, maybe. You can try maybe the cowboy approach. The chaotic cowboy, as I call. As I call. We don't know where we are going to. We are building. We are busy. I'm sure everyone is working, and we test in production. Yeehaw! That is a cowboy one. Maybe you don't reach the, the B. Maybe you can use agile by iterating. Maybe you say like that's good enough. We deliver the highest value of this product. We can stop here and invest the budget somewhere else. Or maybe let's be clear. The point B. It's not really a static target. It's a moving target where we want to go. So by inspecting and adapting, maybe we say that is a B2 or it's a C. And that's where we want to go, right? That is a better quality of the product, higher satisfaction from the clients, having more clients, keeping the ones we have, keeping the employees. Some coaching approaches for you. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's, I see some thumbs up. I, I've been there as well. So I make fun, but I still see people doing that. Like just, yeah, you need Agile. You need Scrum. So no, man, I'm doing well my work here. I'm, I'm fine. No, no, no. <laughs> you look, man, you're, you're doing such a shitty job. <laughs> you, you need Agile. So maybe that approach might be a bit um, going in the, the Newton's law. If you push something, it pushes back with the same uh, force. So if you push something into the team, there is a big chance that it's going to push back to you. Some coaching approaches, right? So what is the sweet spot for you as a stance? On one side, hmm, this kind of approach, or Scrum Master or Leader, like that's how we go, that's how we do. The other one is just a coach that keeps uh, touching his chin and saying like, uh, what do you think? What do you do in this case? Huh? What would be the best thing we could try? I mean, those are extremes where I don't like to be much. Of course, you can come here from time to time and it's really a coaching, but maybe you can find your sweet spot. Where does it apply? Where is it better for that context, right? And what touches your heart as well as a professional? Some circles of influence. Here, we can change ourselves. Here, we can influence, we can escalate. And here, might not be very easy to change. It's very bad. I'm living in Belgium. I come from Brazil, so I, I sometimes complain a lot here. And just having a metaphor, the team, the flower as a, as a team. Maybe the best is not really try to fix the flower, putting band-aids and making sure the petals are there. Maybe we can make sure that the environment around is good enough. So instead of trying to, let's hire five more analysts so we can go faster. Let's, five, let's hire more uh, tester so we can go faster. Maybe why not making sure that QA environment is always on, that we can always have a laptop when needed, just 10 minutes instead of 10 weeks. How can we make all these things around so the team can go faster, right? And flourish. I think that's a beautiful metaphor. On the other hand, we also have this situation. Sometimes the coach being hired say, hey, can you do all your stuff here and in one month like we are happy forever and ever? That might be very hard. A bamboo, the Chinese bamboo, you have to keep watering that for about five years and nothing comes out of the ground. After five years, it goes like three meters high in a few weeks. So maybe some structural changes also take that long, right? It's not in one month like, woo, we change everything. You have quick wins, but might be a bit hard for structural changes. Can you please implement this Scrum in that team and that team? Well, yeah, we can, but what is, what is actually the thing that is going on there? Maybe it's a maintenance thing, maybe a Kanban would fit better, or maybe we can try something else here. So maybe we need more um, checking what are the pains and the flows to see what are the best pill for that, right? Kaizen Kakaku Ikakushin. You are going to be uh, certified the Japanese uh, speakers here by the end of the, the talk. Just for you to have an idea, this is the improvement, this is time. Kaizen, a traditional one, normally goes really slow and it's like the status quo is hanging there, right? And then you have the Kaizen that is like every day, everybody, everywhere. Then you have some Kaikaku, which is a drastic change in order to improve. And it's like, beam, it changes very fast. 
and you have the Kakushin, which is an innovation change. Maybe it's a pivot on the client, on the, the target people that were having the product, or maybe a new feature, right? Three big blockers for agile transformations. I've seen that we've experienced, of course, the list is huge, but I just put three for you, that's the one I see uh, across companies. First one, the dependencies are not addressed. There are still component teams. To deliver one piece of value, we need other 10 teams. And sometimes they are not even in the same, uh, in the same uh, building. We need to build a piece of value, to build someone, to, to integrate with someone. It takes three months just to integrate and to test everything at the end. So not tackling that and making feature or product teams, that might be a big pain afterwards. Once again, from point A to B, I've seen already a CEO giving the message to the whole organization, saying, uh, reading a prompter. So he was looking at the camera, and there was a prompter. And Agile is cool, and uh, that's what is going to change our, uh, our organization. And uh, so imagine you as an employee reading the, the message of your leader saying, we are going Agile, and that's just because it's a hype or because it's not really the person that is buying and selling, uh, actually, Sponsoring that is not really uh, binding or don't believe in that thing, right? That might be a bit uh, tough. And the third one. Lead by example. Sometimes, yeah, and that is a cascade effect. The higher it is, the more it cascades. So your behaviors are really cascading. You're minus one and minus one, and the whole organization are... Craig Lerman, creator of uh, Less the large scale scrum, he has these four laws. The first one is like the organization is designed to defend the status quo, to keep the status quo as it is. So the line managers, the middle managers, top managers, the specialists, is designed to keep it there. Whenever there is a change, there is a, the organization is designed to defend that, right? Second one, any new terminology will be overloaded until it loses its value or just became the, single, uh, the simple thing that we were um, saying before, the status quo, right? So it's, ah, oh, we are agile, oh, you are so agile. Oh, you took the, the, the clicker, you are so agile. <laughs> and then you overload and the terminology becomes uh, just meaningless. The third one, we are different. Agile is not going to work here. I mean, we are special because we are a bank and you know, it's, uh, it's too idealistic. Oh, your solution is too purist. Uh, agile will never work here, right? And the fourth one, culture follows structure. Even Peter Drucker said, like, uh, culture eats uh, structure from in the breakfast with some eggs. Lencioni, so the four uh, disciplines for having an organizational health. So it's not only about one part of the organization being improved, but the whole company having a better health. Build a cohesive leadership team. So the team, the leaders, should be cohesive in working as a team, not each of them trying to improve their own departments, right? Create clarity, over-communicate clarity, reinforce clarity. So the message should be clear. Why are we doing this change here? Where we want to go? And again, and again, and again. Trying to make sure that everyone in the company understands and they are speaking and understanding the same language. Why, where, how we are doing that thing, right? Six questions for clarity. Also from the book of uh, Lencioni, which is the advantage. Why do we exist? How do we behave here? What do you do? How will we succeed? What is important right now? What is the priority right now? Who must do what? So if those are overly communicated and the whole organization understand and know how to answer these, these questions, that is about organizational health, right? That's going to that. Local optimization versus system optimization. I like to see the organization as a big accordion, right? And the goal would be actually to shrink that because from here we have the request from the client, an idea, the needs, and here we ship the value. We make sure that it's there, someone is happy, and we're fixing a problem or delivering something new. And the better we shrink that, the, the, the faster is the feedback and more waste are we avoiding in between. I did already this value stream mapping when I was coaching business. And that was all the steps before IT picks it up. That was all the refinement, one pager, and then a business, uh, I don't know what, and then another stuff, and a gate. And then a gate. And then we do this, and a gate. And then refine, refine, and just put the PMs and the POs, gate. And then IT picks it up after six months, after one year, after two years. So that can be quite long, right? 
So instead of optimizing locally, every department, I just put some uh, common departments, right? Instead of optimizing in silos, like, yeah, we optimize a bit, we optimize a bit, and sometimes even in different directions, why not communicating over all the departments and making sure that I love this large, oh, ta -da, and having a system optimization that's way more powerful because it's the whole flow from end to end and the whole organization optimizing together instead of each trying to optimize its own department. From Pia Maria, um, she wrote the book Agile HR, and she says, like, uh, if you're going agile, probably HR should be leading that. Probably HR should be the one saying, let's go for that. Because if you are changing the roles of everyone and the responsibilities, but the rewards, the way of paying, and uh, the, what is the opposite of reward? I always look for this word and I never know. What is the opposite of reward? Reward is good, yeah? Huh? Let's, let's go for punishment. It's a, it's a bit stronger than what I was looking for, but let's go for punishment. So the way you keep punishing people or uh, rewarding, the way they are structured, it influences exactly the whole organization. So it doesn't mean that you're going to change uh, PM to PO and someone is going to become a scrum master, that everything's going to be uh, all good. So HR should be leading that, should be like, yeah, that's agile. We understand the values. We understand where we want to go. Let's go. And leading the whole transformation. So uh, I invite you to have a coffee with your leaders, with your peers, with your bosses, with your Scrum Masters, POs, everyone in your company, to discuss these points, discuss what would be the ideal. She has a, a hard time with me because I don't stop. She's like, <laughs> and make sure that you align with them. What is the best for your situation? Maybe a copy and paste from another organization might not be the best for you. So what is exactly that you can change in your organization? Maybe starting from the coffee, maybe starting from something bigger. Is it top down? Is it bottom up? Is it a full framework coming? But what would suit best your organization? By the way, um, 20 minutes is very short. I would like to talk more. But let's have a coffee and make sure that you ask anything you want. It was a pleasure being here. Thank you very much. Thanks for your time. Thank you.